Hello everyone, Mecha here. Welcome to another Fire Emblem tier list review. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but now we're back with Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War, aka FE4. This list has been done for quite a while. This is the list that I end up making over the course of the big tier list uh, with units submitted by my Patreons. And at some point, we ran out of units, and now this is our chance to see if it's actually an accurate tier list or not. Maybe there's some mistakes, some, some travesties in there. And to help me review it, I brought a guest along with me, as usual. Um, they are a very accomplished Fireman player. Hello, Falk. How are you doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. All right. <clears throat> Falk, um, I know you like FE4 to some extent. Could you tell us what you like about it? Or if you like it at all, maybe you don't like it? Uh, well, FE4 is an uh, interesting game because it's very different from pretty much every Fireman game. Uh, I'm not going to say that I like it a lot. But I do think it uh, gets a bit of flack from uh, more efficiency crowds. Because uh, there's a lot of good meat in the game if you actually want to analyze it. But the game's really long. It's got <laughs> a lot of bad features. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you uh, agree that Fireman 4 is more fun to discuss and theorize about than it is to play? Uh, to a degree, yeah. Uh, I really liked making the strategies for the maps. I didn't so much like doing them. <laughs> <laughs> what what playthrough did you do? What playthrough are you referring to? Uh, the uh, ranked LTC that I did. Oh yeah, wasn't that one born out of like someone said you couldn't do it, so you had to you had to do it to prove it wrong? Uh, essentially, somebody on Reddit informed me as I was trying to argue some <laughs> low turn strategy or something that you cannot play Fire Emblem Four ranked and LTC at the same time. So and, you uh, did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so I did. So you, you get the lowest rank count possible, but you also S rank the game. You got like A rank all around, right? It's it's technically not the lowest. Uh, it's the lowest with full recruitment. Um, but you can theoretically save, I think it's four turns, because that's what Altana costs. Mm -hmm. But yeah. That's funny. Uh, I'll link in the description. Hopefully I will remember. So we're going to go through the units from uh, the top of this list to the bottom and we'll move them around as we uh, go through them. Uh, the plan is for today to go over Generation 1. I expect that it will take us a full video and then we can go over Generation 2 a, at a later time. So uh, that'll be the plan for today. If we somehow end up talking about like one unit for half an hour, then it'll be multiple videos. But you'll be able to tell because you'll see where we're at at the end of the video. And so we'll start from the top, we'll start with Sigurd. And I don't think Sigurd is going to move, but I think this is a good opportunity to talk about the efficiency meta of FE4 in general to get a rough idea of what an FE4 efficient playthrough looks like. So I'm going to describe, describe what I think it looks like, because I have I think I have a rough idea, uh, and I'd like you to add on to it or correct me if I'm wrong, all right? So... Um, Obviously, FE4 is a seize-only game. You go from castle to castle, seizing everything with Sigurd. So, and because mm -hmm. Sigurd is also the best combat unit in the game, at least for the first generation, he generally does like almost all the combat by himself. And everyone else's job is he, is to facilitate Sigurd by like healing him or getting enemies out of his way, uh, or to get side objectives, so, like get villages or do something else that's necessary for complete recruitments, or you know maybe working ahead of schedule in another castle. And you just keep doing that until you finish the game on low turn count. Is that roughly correct? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say Sigurd does all of the combat in the game. Whenever you are like the early castles in maps, he's doing all the combat because he has to be pushed as far ahead as possible. But sometimes throughout the game, you'll have to like divert castles. And there you'll have like some of the lower tiered units try to help out there, which usually is just so there's less enemies that Sigurd has to deal with when he finally gets there. Yeah. So yeah, I, I did notice in chapter one, I played a little bit of a playthrough that I probably will have in the bottom right, uh, where I'm trying to play somewhat efficiently to give an idea of what kind of playthrough I'm talking about. Obviously, it's gonna like bleed turns here and there because I'm not planning anything. Um, uh -huh. I noticed, for example, like in uh, in chapter one, you got like this warrior boss on Ira's castle, and he can't yeah. kill him by himself. So I had like I think Midir or Quan or something has to chip in, so stuff like that. Yeah, Midir is usually what you go for. Yeah. Kwan is like no hit with the javelin, but you know, he does have ranged attacks. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's Sigurd himself. I mean, I don't know how much there's to say about Sigurd that I haven't said before, but he's like the best combat in the game and he murders almost everything. Uh, yeah, he, does, he, doesn't have great, he doesn't have great two range, it's something I found a little bit annoying, but he can still get that uh, eventually. But it's still better than so most other units, right? 
So he can use Light Brand, which is a very good weapon. Uh, he doesn't have any magic, so... But also, Gen 1 enemies don't really have any stats. Uh, so it's not that big of a deal. And then he can use Javelins. Javelins weigh a lot, and Sacred Speed isn't super great. Though if you give him a Speed Ring, he does double for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, one of the underrated things about Sigurd is not only does he just have a Cap Sword rank and can use the Silver Sword to get right out the gate, he can also use almost every Lance in the game, which are the other good weapon type you want to be using in Gen 1. So he can just use everything that you want him to. Um, the other thing that isn't really talked about about Sigurd is his leadership stars. Uh, how leadership stars work in the game is to give 10 or 10 hit and avoid to every unit within three range of the person who has them uh, for every star after the first. And that includes Sigurd for some reason. Yeah, it's like he gets so, to, to self-charm. <laughs> so he always has 10 more hit and avoid than anyone else. Uh, at most, they're just going to leech off his range. So, but yeah, he's good. He's got good utility. He's one of the best combat units. He starts out pre-promoted, which uh, despite some claims that he doesn't get class change bonuses, uh, how promotions work in this game is they just change class bases. So Sigurd already has his promotion gains. And because FE4 doesn't have like EXP fall off for being promoted. Oh, yeah, there's no there's no problem with that. So he's just a level five unit that has a promoted class and just runs ahead of everyone and kills everything. Yeah. It's a pretty really good, good unit. Yeah, he, he, he's pretty good. I'd like to mention lances. I could we could probably talk about that a little more, but I think it might be more appropriate in the case of like Alec and Noish, if anything. Although I guess the javelin oh, yeah. point is like valid. But I know you like lances more than most other people, but by IP4. Usually people say like yeah. swords are the best. I, I think in generation one lances are supreme. It's uh, generation two when the lances start to fall off because enemy speed actually becomes competent. Ooh. Interesting. But uh uh, Sigurd it, doesn't really care if you like swords or lances more because he can use both. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's really fair. I guess maybe we'll come up with Quan or Finn. Uh, yeah. I, I, I suppose the next question to ask, uh, if we move on to to Sylvia, is is Sigurd a tier of his own, or is it okay for Sylvia to stay with him? Because I think Sylvia is utility is really good. She dances four people at the same time, but she's also only around for like half the maps that Sigurd is, roughly speaking. I don't know math. And then you could argue Sigurd is still better because, you know, Sylvia enables Sigurd and, you know, without uh, Sigurd, Sylvia wouldn't be nearly as good. So do you think it's okay for Sylvia to be S tier or should she actually be lower, lowered? Uh, Sylvia's way too high on your list. She... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is why you're here. Uh, she's so blunt. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the issue with Sylvia is, like you said, she joins uh, in like the middle of chapter two in a place where she doesn't really do anything until you can like return her or warp her back. So she doesn't contribute until maybe the end of chapter two if you do the uh, weird efficiency strat. Uh, if you're like a casual player, she probably doesn't do anything in chapter two. Yeah, I usually return so... her. Like I walk her back to that upper castle and then return her with Ethlyn somehow, but it's really time consuming. Yeah. Um, so she doesn't get to do anything until chapter three. And then chapter three is a really awkward map because you go like up and then you go to the left and then you go back up again. So she's only like doing maybe a one or two useful dances per castle. So it still isn't that useful there. It's chapter four when she really pops off, I would say, because what you can do on that map is since you have to get due to the uh, bridge, you can afford to give Sylvia the leg ring. And uh, that more or less just fixes Sylvia. She like is now doing the typical, I'm going to dance four units every turn and sort of be a broken, fun, funny dancer from Fire Emblem 4. Uh, chapter five, again, she's back to the kind of only does like one dance um, chapter or a castle. So would you also yeah, take off she, the leg, would you also take off the, leg, the leg ring for chapter five? Uh, I usually leave it on her for the first castle and then I take it off after that. OK. What do you think first is like, what's the best target for, so the best target for leg ring overall then is Sigurd, would you say? No, it's always, yeah. It's pretty much always Sigurd by default. When you give it to somebody else, it's because you're doing some weird strategy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think I think for most casual players, they put it on, on Sylvia, often if they've like read about it online, right? Because the idea is you could dance four units most of the time instead of dancing one unit. But I guess when, you, when you, all you care about is what a Sigurd makes it to the next castle, which is better for him to have the thing. Uh, yeah, um, you also, 
for like in chapter four you only really put it on her for the first castle it also doesn't actually save any turns to put it on her you can put it on do instead and do it in the same number of turns oh wow <laughs> yeah um it's just nicer to have more moves on your other units mm -hmm. what about the night ring? But, uh, oh sorry uh, night ring oh yeah night ring always goes on her okay um but well uh like, you want to put the Leg Ring on Sigurd for the second castle of Chapter 4, because that way Sigurd can just walk around Lamia's group, but you don't have to fight them. Because they got mm -hmm. some really nasty weapons. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's fair. That's from Silesia to the final castle, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a Zaxxon, I think, is what the castle's yeah. called. Yes. I don't remember. That's it. That's it. Okay, so where, where would you move Sylvia, then? Uh, So, I consider her to be about on par with Lachesis. Um, so that, uh, Lucky so this is a weird unit because it very much depends if you decide to use the uh, generation one rescue staff, uh, if she's like as good as Sylvia is mm -hmm. that also boosts Sylvia to a degree because it lets her dance more. But, uh, I think they're about on par. They're never going to be as good as the uh, gen two variations of them, but for those last two maps, they're going to be really solid and they work together a lot. So I usually think they're about the same. Um, okay, but the question is, is, is Lacus in, in the right place then, right? Because if she has to move... Oh, she's a little low. Um, I want to put her up... Well, I think it's actually just Finn that's high. Yeah, I think she's fine where she's at. Okay, we'll just move Sylvia next to Lacus then, and if we have to move him further, you know, they're not locked in. You can always change them around a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the S tier. So you think Sigurd is the only S tier then, unit then? Or do you think any of these other units should move up there? Oh, no. No one's on par with them. Okay. That's that's what I thought. <laughs> Good. All right. The only flaw Sigurd has, I forgot mm -hmm. to mention this, uh, he does have bad resistance. Yeah. Which matters in one castle in the entire game. But you also get the tier thing right before that, which I believe fixes the res. Yeah. So it gives him like 20 res, I think. It's quite insane. Yeah. Uh, you do have to spend money to repair it, but yeah, I mean... It fixes I, his only problem in the one cast of the game that it matters. Yeah, so. <laughs> I would. It's it's really annoying because the meteor that always chips him down. So it is really nice to have the the res. Also, it avoids the sleep staff problem if he ever has yeah. to face that. That that's the big issue. Yeah, I uh, what I usually do is like is this more of a casual play trick, I guess. But Sigurd has to buy a lot of stuff for Selif at the end. Like I often don't have Paragon Ring on him anymore. Uh, once he's at that point. So he has to buy it, so then it gives me an excuse to spend a lot of money, and then I just repair the tier thing for like three uses or something, which only costs 3,000 gold after he spent his money on other things. And then he has the tier thing res mm -hmm. so he doesn't need to fight anything with it. He just he uses it as like a super strong pure water, basically. Yeah, I ran into problems when I was doing the LTC. I had to actually fully repair it due to how money management worked. Mm -hmm. But luckily, Dude was able to just jump a shitload of money on him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we, we got through it just fine, but it, it was annoying. I think I think I noticed that trying to your playthrough, you were like almost over planning for everything. That ends up you, you end up over killing like everything at the end. Most, mostly the XP rank is like you did. Way oh yeah, more the than EXP rank was it was way overshoot. I didn't even do arenas in the last chapter. I didn't need to. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out you can't do that, redditor. You can't do that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the next three units have something in common: Ethlyn, Quan, and Finn. Uh, we're gonna go for one of these, but there's like one common denominator between them is that they all leave after chapter three. You don't have them for yes. chapters four uh, or five, uh, but they're really, really useful in the first couple of chapters. So I still have them really high up. And I know that you specifically, uh, I know you used a lot of these units a lot in the early chapters because they're already important. So um, I, I'm curious about how they stack up because not only are they good, but no one else is really on their level for the first couple of chapters. Like I have Lex, Alec, and Noish, and Medir all tier lower because I think they're all worse at combat uh, or other utility in general. Um, and then you see, I don't really care which we discuss first. Does it matter which we discuss first? Uh, uh we can was... talk about Quan and Ethelin. Finn, we'll talk about separately because I think he's a bit worse than where you have him. Sure. But, uh, yeah, Ethelin is, uh, probably the second best unit in the game. Uh, her big trait, I would say, is that she gives Sigurd 20 crit. <laughs> uh, so, uh, as you noted, a lot of times Sigurd can't one round KO bosses naturally. So sometimes if you want to get Sigurd to kill a boss faster, you put Ethlin next to him. And then there's like a 36% chance it takes one less turn than normal, which isn't a big deal because you could just take the extra turn. Yeah, that's but what I did nice a lot of the time <laughs> when I couldn't yeah. like, get the crit. Because like, I didn't want to like rely on crits for it, but I did try for it and I reset if it didn't work a couple times. 
Well, you never really have to reset for it, is the thing. You could just put her there, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, the other thing that she has is the return staff and the men's staff on a horse. She's the only one that's going to really keep up with you to heal some of your units. Uh, she's the only one that's going to be able to return characters without, you know, trying to do it with Lucky Dane. <laughs> yeah, just, it just doesn't doesn't really work. <laughs> uh, you're you're going to be spending forever on maps that already take forever. Yeah. Um, so she's got that. Uh, her combat's actually fairly decent. Because uh, she can use A swords right away. So you can give her like the steel blade or something. And that makes her combat pretty competent. When she promotes, she gets like plus six strength as well. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, female She's a good pursuit ring candidate. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. She's one of the most reliable units for taking out the pirates in chapter three. Um, so yeah, she's very good uh, combat wise. Also... Like how she gives Sigurd 20 crit, Sigurd also gives her 20 crit. Quan also, because they're married, they give each other 20 crit. So you could, like, put her next to both of them, and now she's got 40 crit. And then she's already got critical, so she's adding all of her skill to that as well. So she, she'll she kill enemies for you. Uh, does it make a difference whether she has critical or not? Because I thought it just, like, enabled crits, but lovers already do that, right? Uh, no. no. So lovers don't add the skill stat. Uh, lovers just add a flat 20. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Because you said Sigurd has like a thirty-six percent chance, so I thought it was like. Skill. So you're gonna be you're gonna be hitting him twice. Oh, I see. so oh. you just need to crit once out of twice. Oh, that's very one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I thought the biggest deal about Ethelin was the fact that she kept people like Sigurd and Quan alive uh, during like hectic chapters, like chapter two, when you're like going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rank. That's like the other great thing about her is yeah, yeah. She'll heal up people. The men's staff, the men's staff has a really funny formula compared to previous games, where in like other games it's twenty plus your magic. It's now. I believe it's 10 plus your magic times two, which allows it to heal a lot more than it should. It might be more than that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's a very good staff for healing, even if you have bad magic. Um, so yeah, she's just good. Yeah, really good. So even despite the fact that she has like, not half the amount of chapters that other people do, but like sort of like it, she's still much better than all of them, basically. Yeah, so it's not so much i think people do recognize that she only exists for two-thirds of the game and that is a problem the issue is is nobody's really that good in the last few maps other than sigurd so it's not that big of a deal yeah the yeah, unison gen one just outside of sigurd like not that good i guess kind of kind of mid yeah yeah it's 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 less that i think ethelin feels overrated for people and more just i think people are overrating every other unit yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess availability is not that big of a deal if you're not that good, especially because this is a game where like centralized combat onto like one or two units is just so so powerful. Oh yeah, yeah, this is very much a juggernaut game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some people I know a common strategy for new players is to do the little death ball strategy where you put all your units together. Yeah, makes um, this game harder. <laughs> yeah, it makes the game harder usually because you have to keep track of more things. You're putting all your squishy units in range mm -hmm. when it's so much easier just to build one strong unit and just set them in range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> It's, uh, the earlier you get someone like Sigurd to one round, the better it just all becomes, as long as you can uh, survive. I've been in, I, I, when I try to play it efficiently, sometimes I end up in a spot where I do have to involve my other units, but most of the time I'm just trying to keep people out of range of enemies. I just let Sigurd do as much as possible. Uh huh. Also, so yeah. he builds up crit on his weapons, of course. Oh, yeah, and critical is important, but not for Generation 1. No. Uh, but that's where you build you, it. Yeah. Uh, there is a strategy where you build crit on the Steel Sword and you oh, get yeah. Sigurd to crit for uh, Chapter 3. Uh, that boss fight is really fast, so Sigurd has trouble run running it. If he has cap speed in a speed ring, he does kill with the Brave Lance, mm -hmm. but that's usually not what Sigurd has. No. So, so you there is a strategy where you give him like the crit steel sword, and then you like hope he gets a crit. If he doesn't, you just take another turn. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, shall we yeah. move on to uh, to go Quan then? Because he has the same availability as uh, Ethelin, but he's just a combat juggernaut. I think the most standout trait for Quan for me so far is the fact he has nine moves. So if you want someone yeah. to come along with Sigurd and help him out, especially in like chapter two where you get to move your full move every turn, uh, he's just ahead of even other mounted units. So he can he's the only one who can help out. So that's like a big boon. Uh, he has massive strength, but he doesn't wander out anything unless he procs a deck, which is like what six percent of base or something, zero percent. I don't know. It's like very low. And yeah, then... his adept proc rate isn't... Well, it's 20 plus his attack. Oh, right, right, right. It's not FE5. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, it's not great, but it is still notable. Yeah, it happens sometimes. So if he fights like five enemies, it'll probably happen like once or twice, I guess. But yeah, uh, it's it's good for setting up kills for other people if you really wanted to, I guess. Uh, but it's just... Kwanis just has like massive bunk of stats, uh, not much avoid, so he doesn't really dodge anything. So I find that like, mm -hmm. he does get like 
worn down if he fights a lot of enemies, so generally I prefer to leave the secret if I can. Uh, but he's still useful in a couple spots, especially chapter 2. Uh, I don't know if he deserves to be next to Ethlin, but I found him really, really good. And like you said, like the other units just aren't that good in this, so I'm wondering where he mm -hmm. falls in this. Uh, I'd say he's, yeah, at the number 3 position. Um, Kwan is... He, 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 don't, he doesn't avoid much, but he's really bulky. Uh, he's got a ton of defense and a ton of HP. He comes in pre-promoted, and he hits really hard. Um, he's the only unit that can use the Silver Lance immediately when you get it, so that's a 20 might weapon. Um, he's one of the bulkiest units in the first generation, I believe. Other than, I think Arden might be better, but... It's got to be, whatever. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and he's also, he's got 9 moves. He's the only unit that keeps up with Sigurd. You really notice this in some maps where... You know, it's only one movement, but when you're spending like 10 turns moving across the big map, that, that's 10 movement. With rolls. That's like a whole, yeah, that's a whole turn difference. Uh, I don't believe for mounted units that matters. I think they round up by the same, but for foot units, that's, it's, it's a killer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah, he's the only one that keeps up with Sigurd, meaning he's, if you're like inefficiency, he's the only one that's going to usually kill the enemy in front of the castle. Because all castles in this game have a guard. So, uh, like, Chapter 2, for example, that final castle, the uh, the Ballista in there, Quan like, one-shots him with the Silver Lance. Oh, yeah. That's, like, one of the Quan few could... enemies that he one-shots, though, right? That he one-rounds. Because almost everything else, uh, without the Brave Lance, he's not going to do it. Yeah, he can use the Brave Lance. Um, usually, I give the Brave Lance to Sigurd, but, I mean, Quan can use it, too. Uh, he does one-shot, and he, like, priests or ballistas or anything like that uh generally just though the big chunk of damage is very useful because a lot of your other units can have trouble killing enemies in like two rounds of combat or three even so just getting them down to like low uh hp is good enough that you can kind of feed kills to other people he's like the jagan of the game yeah <laughs> like he's like forced to jake <laughs> sometimes i say the sacred jing is for himself but he can't do everything by himself so uh -huh. still really helpful <clears throat> i agree it's just i really wish you could one out bandits early on or something like that to get him out of the way uh yeah he, he doesn't do that uh though he does do so much damage with the steel lance i always take it off him and give him an iron lance because it's just as good yeah same he... i put the steel lance on finn instead because you know yeah i'm one out with it it's pretty cool speaking of which should we talk about finn yeah so I, I'm, the by the way, this is only for Gen 1, Finn, so if you want to move him down... Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, if this was Gen 2, Finn, he'd go up. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's S-tier Finn. <laughs> Highest availability in the game, baby. Yeah. All right. True, but, true, true. uh... But, uh, so Finn... Um, he's, like, one of your best combat units uh, outside of Sigurd. He's the only one that really can do what Sigurd does for quite a while. You can get the other calves to start to do what Sigurd does, but it takes a lot of investment, it takes a lot of time. Finn's also the most reliable because he got the miracle skill. Yeah, which um, is ironic, but yeah. Um, yeah, because the miracle skill is really good in this game. Because it gives consistent avoid uh, based on your HP stat. And a lot of enemies in this game tend to not do much damage if you have uh, fed Finn quite a lot. So usually you always end up in the miracle range. Um, I will say that it is upholdant like how good miracle is it does depend a lot on how finn grows yeah because sometimes he just can't set it up <clears throat> goes out of 10 hp but, and then it's like shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you took it like 10 avoid at 10 but yeah yeah it's but, 11 then you know it's 11 that's the really bad where you're one. about to die 10 avoid is uh yikes uh-huh but you know that it's going to end up where, where it's going to end up so you can plan around it a little bit uh, oh yeah you can always plan around it um i mean sometimes you get mid enemy phase defense procs and that kind of screw you over but i mean oh, yeah. it's <clears throat> he's got pursuit uh which generally i think pursuit's kind of an overrated skill but because finn is like strong enough to one round enemies it's really good on him um it's alec where it kind of falls off but mm -hmm. <laughs> but for finn it's really good uh finn is also a great example of why lances are really good because even though his strength stat isn't super high just the might that lance is given this game enables him to one-round enemies because the seal lance is 16 might whereas says the seal sword is 10 so that's like plus six it's better than the silver sword even when it comes to damage yeah it's pretty strong and it doesn't matter too much that it weighs him down because he's going to double early on anyway against the axe enemies and then the next chapter is like almost yeah. all armor knights so it's like whatever he can still quadruple <laughs> with the brave or double with the steel or whatever you want yeah he'll 
He'll uh, double pretty much everything. Um, so the hunters without the speed ring, I found. Yeah, the hunters, uh, he does need the speed ring for. Uh, because bows only weigh, I think it's eight. Yeah, uh, they weigh eight. They're, they have zero AS. Uh, my singer uh -huh. <laughs> didn't grow speed in prologue, so he couldn't double archers with the, with the stupid oh, no. It was so annoying. And he had one strength, <laughs> so he couldn't one-up the steel sword. I'm still salty about it, by the way. I don't know what you can tell. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, one good thing you do with Finn is because his speed is uh, not great, is he, he picks up the speed ring in the first village. Um, nobody really wants to go out of their way for it, and he's kind of bad in the prologue, so it works out. Yeah, I was going to ask if he likes to give me the Sigurd, because you mentioned him having it earlier, but I don't think he's, so, it's not great for him. Sig Sigurd's good if you plan on having Sigurd build up kills on the Javelin, because he needs that to double enemies. Mm hmm. But uh, otherwise, he doesn't need it. Yeah. Um, I guess if you get in the cap speed, he can double the uh, chapter three boss with it. But that's another outlier case. Yeah. I mean, you can always trade it around for a low cost of five thousand gold per transaction. So you know. It's, it's, it's okay. uh ten thousand gold. Oh yeah. yeah. It's it's twenty k. Yeah. Okay. You're right. <laughs> See. Guess yeah. It's pretty smart. So okay. Uh. Yeah. Uh. And then, I would and say. Then he he promotes and yeah, he then he leaves. <laughs> well, yeah, so the thing that he's really good for is he's the best unit that handles the Cross Knights, which is like, you don't technically have to fight them, but you're going to run into problems if you try to skip them, so you should. Uh, because of Miracle, he's got pretty much 100% chance, provided you have the stats for it, um, that he'll one-round them. And he does reach the Strength Benchmark to double them with the uh, Javelin on average. And if he doesn't hit the average, there is that village that gives plus three strength. Oh yeah, so. <clears throat> which is like yeah, the best very... unit for anyway, because he's going to be around for longer, right? Uh, there's a couple of units you might give it to. It's not super useful though. Nothing's really contested. Mm -hmm. I gave it to a Zell in my run to get him to kill things with the light brand at one range. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like for uh, for Finn, it like he, if Finn needs it, Finn's gonna take it. Nobody else is gonna take it from him yeah that's fair okay do you usually promote him before he leaves uh yeah i think it's a good idea mm -hmm. um one problem you can run into is if he's too good yeah <laughs> uh he can be he, too good to where in, when you get him back in chapter seven the enemies will just ignore him yeah uh there's that defense house and uh that's right next to the castle where you defeat chagall uh that almost screwed me over in my run because it put finn like one defense like short of where he was only taking one damage from the enemies so okay. he still attacked them but i did have to make sure he didn't level up defense while fighting <laughs> because then they would have stopped yeah i've had a similar like suffering from success with him where i would do like an older strategy where i was, would lay, train leaf on those armor knights so i wouldn't i wouldn't finn to like beat them within an inch of their lives but then finn would just one round them with an iron lance there's no weaker weapon in this game because the slim lance is stronger so finn would just mm -hmm. like he wouldn't be able to set up kills for leaf anymore which is unfortunate uh, fortunately i know you don't need that strat to feed leaf kills like I know, yeah. but that's one thing. There's a lot of ways to feed leaf kills. Yeah. We, well, we can talk more about that when we get to Gen 2. Exactly. But yeah, uh, so yeah, the biggest problem with Finn is he's like a very good combat unit, but a lot of what he does isn't that necessary. Um, it's usually just for his own good, so we can get him promoted for Gen 2. Uh, the big ones are the Cross Knights, and I think Chapter 2, that stretch for the second castle where he gets the Brave Lance. Nobody else can really use it at that time period because that's when you get it. So he's also very good in that section. Otherwise, he doesn't have a lot to be doing. He's like useful. He's about as good as the other calves, but mm -hmm. those are there's only two standout points, I'd say. So I generally put Finn in like the B tier usually. Oh, wow. It's going to be pretty lonely in A tier then. Damn. Well, not lonely, uh, but. Uh, I mean, there, there's other, yeah, other people other in there. there. I don't not, think anyone else is moving down. I'm surprised they see him move down. <laughs> uh, I can see it though. So it's really just a combination of like there's not much he needs to be doing and he's like not around for four and five, I guess. Yeah, he's like really good. It's just there's not or he's like really competent as a combat unit. There's just not a lot for him to do as a combat unit. Mm -hmm. oh, so like for a casual player, you know, you probably will get a lot of use out of him. Mm -hmm. It's just inefficiency. He kind of isn't as great. Yeah. And to reiterate, this is just for his Gen 1 performance. It's not about his Gen 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gen 2 is a different story. <laughs> yeah. So we already talked a little bit about uh, Sylvia and Lacus's being equivalent. So I guess we just have to left like because I'm assuming Lacus and Sylvia are staying here then. 
basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should stay there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Lucky Sis, um, she... <clears throat> it really depends on when you promote her and if you decide to pair Azelle and Edain yes. for the rescue staff. Um, uh, Claude and Edain? Uh, so, Claude and Edain does get you the rescue staff, but it comes at like the end of the generation, so it's not as useful. Oh, so is that what you mean by, like, what do you do with Gen 1 or Gen 2? Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. there's two strategies that you go about efficiency. In FE4, you either pair Azeli Dane or you do Claudie Dane. Um, Azeli Dane is two turns slower, but it's more reliable. So it's usually the one that's preferred. Uh, but Claudie Dane is the faster one. It's the one I did in the LTC. Um, you don't get the rescue staff in Gen 1 when you do that. You get it at, like the last turn of chapter five <laughs> but then you get it for all of gen two is it just because so the it's, pairing is so slow that you don't get it earlier well you physically can't get it until chapter five yeah okay but um, you don't, you're not gonna get turn five turn one of <laughs> chapter five apparently yeah yeah, yeah yeah um yeah you're not gonna get it turn one of chapter five because it is a very slow pairing it actually only works because of the jealousy <laughs> uh system so some people might even be concerned about that because if you ever reset the game uh, you can't really do it anymore. <laughs> no, good time. So more points to the Azel route. Kaga moment. Uh, the jealousy system is very weird. I kind of figured out why it is the way it is, and it's due to bad coding. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. So, but those are the two routes you go through it. Um, generally, I prefer the Azel route because it is more reliable uh, by a lot. Um, because a couple things that. Azel route enables is you can get four seti without losing turns. Oh wow! Um, you don't have to promote Leaf right away, so you can sort of get his promotion. And the rescue staff in the generation one is just nice to have. Interesting. Um, and that's like all Lacus's really does. That's really so like that really matters in efficiency because I'm assuming you don't really need, need uh, another combat unit when she promotes. Uh, she is actually a pretty good combat unit in Chapter 5. Uh, that's the other place where she's good. The uh, Andre squad, I think is his name. Oh, yeah. Uh, she has enough magic. Usually she needs a magic ring, though she can just grow it naturally uh, to one-round them with Light Brand. Oh, wow. I was expecting a bow combat. Interesting. No, the bow, the bow units aren't very good, even there. They all have brave bows, so they kind of well, just kill them. I expected uh, <laughs> Lacus to use a bow, is what I meant. Oh, Lacus to use a bow. Well, I mean, you can because uh, she can use everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but Light Brand's preferable because she kills on Light Brand. Yeah, basically. So she can she can build up. Yeah, she can, you can train your weapons. That's like the thing with Heavy 4. You can train weapons to become <laughs> good. So. Yeah, yeah the, a, a lot of the problem with uh, tiering units at Heavy 4 is like we could talk about all these scenarios where it's, uh, oh, they can kill all these enemies. But usually it doesn't matter. And if they're only doing it for self-improvement, it really doesn't matter. But if you could do something cool with like, I can build kills on Light Brand. Now it's actually good for the team. <clears throat> yeah, if you can send up Arden to do something like kill like 5,000 enemies with the light brand somewhere without costing anything, you'd do it. And that'd make Arden better. <laughs> uh huh. Arden uh, could kill Andre's squad pretty easily with the killer bow and the pursuit ring. Yeah. It's the best <laughs> unit. And, and if you want to get him there in an efficient time, rescue staff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Who said that efficient play wasn't creative? Yep. Uh, okay, so, um, so she's staying then, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, I would leave her there. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing she does is, if you promote her in chapter three, you can have her use the warp staff, uh, and that can help Sigurd get around the place a bit faster. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Um, because you will have a mounted uh, warp user because Ethlin has C staffs. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Ethlin can't use warp. Um, also, it's kind of nice to have her promoted just to make yeah. that Ultagon go away. Mm -hmm. um, what does yeah, it she's take? She's got good to get combat. Her? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got good combat. It's just not as useful. Mm -hmm. But the rescue staff, I think, is what would keep her in A tier. If there wasn't the rescue staff, I think she's going to be. Mm -hmm. What does it take to get her promoted at what point? Like, I think you promoted her in Chapter 3 with Paragon yeah, bands okay. in Chapter 2. So that's a very uh, difficult promotion to do, because you have to get her through the Chapter 2 arena, which he isn't good at. Um, and you have to, like, give her the uh, Paragon ring, like, almost immediately. And you need to have her use a bunch of heals. She has to get, like, level 15 by the end of the chapter. It's very tight because she joins at a pretty low level. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, what I recommend for casual players is don't mess with that. Just ever sit at the castle and spam the return staff. Yeah, same. That's what I always do. Don't even bother with the Paragon ring because you know just take twice as many turns, Lamal. Mm hmm But uh, yeah, when you're trying to be efficient about it, uh, you don't even really need to have her promoted for Chapter Three to be honest. 
it's it's a one turn save uh and you kind of need a lot of money a lot of people have problems getting due through the arena because he's not very good past the second <laughs> level mm -hmm. um so you might just not have the money to give to her to get the pursuit ring or the paragon ring at that point so yeah it's, uh, I find it a bit of a hassle to give it a Paragon Band that uses like Spam to Return Band for prepared a couple times. She even gets a Night Ring that she can sell for even more money at the end of Chapter 2. Yeah, yeah. Not done by that, so. Yeah, at the end of Chapter 2, she's fine. She yeah. has tons of money. She's like filthy rich. Rich, rich but, princess. But in Chapter 2, she, although she does have like one of the highest starting golds of her. Yeah, her class. Ring. I think it's based on class, right? How much gold you right, get. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah, so she has like a really high starting gold, but it's not enough to buy the Paragon Ring. No, it's not. I think for the arena, she's not very good stat wise. I do think you can rig her to win in the arena with uh, the Mirror Will Sword, though, if you wanted to. Kind of. Um, you have to kind of rig her to not level up HP. Oh. <laughs> but uh, that's something I had to do in my run. It also kind of screwed her over later because she had really low HP. <laughs> <laughs> Suffering from success ish, I uh, guess. <laughs> down rigging is always a fun idea. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, like, so she has trouble with that arena. You might not get her through it. But again, you could just staff spam if you really want to get her promoted for Chapter 3. She's really good as a combat unit if you want to use her there. It's just, she's not that needed for it. There's yeah. a lot of units that do that. Yeah, it's funny how a unit that gets, like, the Master Knight promotion isn't that necessary for combat. It really tells a lot, says a lot about what kind of game this is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that, anything else about Lacuses? Uh... Oh, uh, she's really good in Chapter 5 as a combat unit. I kind of hinted on that because she kills Andre's squad. Also really good for killing Raptor. Because um, she can use the killer bow. And that's like the best weapon to fight him with. Outside of the weird strategy of uh, Earth Sword Tail 2. Uh, <laughs> is technically the optimal way to fight Raptor. But Because <laughs> the Earth Sword negates uh, Pavis, right? Yeah, it negates Pavis. That's technically the best way to fight him. But... Uh, She's also a good option. She's also a good option if you are using like a Zell or something as well as a combat unit because she can heal him. Also Charisma. <laughs> you can also funny. use Lewin if you have Forsetti. But yeah. I never even thought of like having Lacus like, even check her forecast against Reptor because I feel like uh, when you said that I was like maybe she gets one of KO'd but I, I'm guessing she probably has like, just enough to survive then? Yeah, usually. I mean, she can get one hit KO'd. Everybody mm -hmm. can. <laughs> yeah, just don't rig her Love HP down. Sucks. Yeah, yeah don't, don't rig her HP down. Um. <laughs> uh -huh. Shall we move yeah. on to the to the money machine then? Mr. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. So dude's Dude. like the most. He's like the special unit. He's the he's the most amazing, like funniest unit in the game. I think because like his combat is so trash, but his ability is like <laughs> even if they steal steal gold from enemies, it's just so much potential for for grinding. I feel like. Uh, that one of my one of my notes is like I think do is like for casual play is kind of whatever ish like you can use him if you want and it'll make your units better but if you don't use them you'll probably be fine and then if you're playing efficiently he's useful for like a couple things like getting Lacus's more money to like get Paragon or something but if you're playing like ranked he's obviously like the most important unit in the game almost so it's like a really different unit wherever you go is that right yeah yeah I like to say do is the unit that makes bad units good yeah um <laughs> it's true. Almost every unit in the game that like struggles in some way can be fixed by dropping 40k on them or something. Yeah. Um, and do is just the unit that enables that. Um, he gets a lot of money through just fighting enemies. He has a lot of avoids, so he can usually fight them and not really worry. And they don't one-hit KO him a lot of the time. You mean like the axe enemies? Yeah. Um, obviously, you shouldn't do what a lot of casual players do, which is try to put do on the forest right next to where he spawns because yeah, he no. just dies there. <laughs> So many people do that. I'm like, dude, there's a beach right there. Like, I, I get not walking him to your audience because that's like positioning wise, that can be a little annoying. But just put him on the uh -huh. beach. It's a one tile choke point. Come on. Yeah, you just put him on the beach there and then have you Dane heal him. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to risk it, I mean, they roll only 14 hit. That's really high chance to hit him after a while. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to risk it, he'll get a lot of money there. That's the other thing. I think because oh. new players take a while to get to him, they get a lot of chances to hit him. Mm hmm. Uh, one thing I would like to note is because there is a weird strategy that I see go around, which is the idea that we uh, grind a, a slim sword up to 100 kills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, in chapter one. And the reasoning for that is to get due through the arena, which grinding a slim sword to 100 kills in chapter one takes like, I think it's like 80 turns. 
and <laughs> this is a ranked like strategy by the way this is strategy yeah, for rank yeah <laughs> and it's also like an hour of real time <laughs> uh, so like something you could do if you really are that desperate to get do money is instead of grinding kills you could just have do grind money because it doesn't take that long you only get 17k from the arena that's 17 attacks <laughs> that's like a quarter of the time <laughs> <laughs> so I never really got why people want to grind up a slim sword for you to go through the arena. Because yeah, dude's bad in the arena, and you kind of just accept that. Yeah. Um, around chapter three, he can actually be quite good in the arena because of his bargain skill. What you do is you can just buy rings for no cost, and that just inflates all of his stats by plus five. So yeah, usually but... after chapter three, he's good to get through the arena. Yeah, I. I love that strategy, but I never find it uh, easy to like accommodate the money for him because I'm usually giving it to other people, <laughs> so he doesn't uh -huh. have much himself. There's not a lot of people that need the money, so you can kind of put it wherever. Usually, a lot of people like to give it to bad units that they want to play with. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you can give it to himself. Uh, another strategy you could do with Do he's just, the only unit that really makes use of this. It's technically a glitch, so you know people will have problems with it. But you can use the. Uh, male unit with the uh, oh, yeah. Miracle Sword glitch. Um, he makes the best use of it because although the Miracle Sword is expensive, he doesn't really pay money for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you, you can just break the sword, have Dew buy it, have him repair it. He'll get through the arena pretty easily, especially because he can just buy and sell the defense ring, so that's really nice for Miracle setups. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, he, he'll be able to get through the arena with that. Yeah. Again, it's like a glitch. Some people don't like that, but it is an option <laughs> if you want to get option. up through. Yeah, I think you could for the miracle sword. If you want to make it more less expensive, I think what you could do is you would break the miracle sword, have him buy it broken, then buy so much that he doesn't have much gold left. Repair the miracle sword for like a couple uses, then play in the arena, and then well, you... it doesn't matter because he also repairs for half cost. So when he sells it in the end, it's he's just getting it all back. Oh, true, true, true. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's funny that. Repairing is also a bargain for him. Yeah, he, he repairs for free. Mm -hmm. He has items for free. Bargain is such a silly skill and it does really well on him. Yeah. He, so, he's the ultimate money manager. Yeah. But like, he's very good, like even in efficient play, because even Sigurd wants money at some point. I was like, oh, I needed to repair tier frame because I managed money poorly. Yeah. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, sell off generally likes to have a lot of rings inherited to him and do can make sure that you afford that in case you were bad at money management mm -hmm. uh also whoever ends up marrying bridget uh he can give them a lot of money so that patty inherits a bunch of stuff Ooh, so, that's smart. so yeah that's another option um yeah. and then like just underperforming units like tail two who uh just have a problem getting promoted just drop 40k on her by the paragon ring you can get her promoted by chapter five <laughs> <laughs> Easy as pie. And this is like, this yeah. is just in the, in the sense of like, I want to use this unit for fun. So I'm just going to make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Tail 2, uh, yeah, she, we'll get to her, but. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only reason. Okay, good. No no advanced strategies here with Tail 2. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, you to... can use her. She's technically more reliable than Lewin. Um... Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, looking forward to it. Looking forward. I have one last uh, note on do one more one more pro strat that I think I got from you, which is like just leave. If you see a bandit burning down a village, your first instinct might be to stop him because that's what knights do. But instead, you just leave oh, him yeah. there and you just steal their money with do because they have five k on them. I don't know why they're robbing village when they already have five k, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you kill like bandits burning a village, and that village didn't have any items, you are technically wasting money. Yeah. Because do will just get five k. Now, ideally. <laughs> You have to rob them, then you kill them, and then you have to visit the village for more money. But <laughs> yeah, you can like the village in chapter one is the prime example one of just don't even bother to save it. You'll get more money later on. Mm hmm. It's funny. All right, let's do. Uh, does that round out A tier, or is there someone we're gonna we're gonna rise up here? Uh, I think that's it. Okay, uh, well, that's what I. That's I don't see I... anyone else I'd want to put up there. Mm hmm. Same here. So we already went over Finn. So uh, here's here's my here's my impression of like here's why he's here. I guess I should say this is, here's why he's here. And if it's a travesty, you'll know why. So uh -huh. um, I thought about Lex. I was like, for most casual players, Lex is like one of their favorite units. It's like you, they get uh -huh. Hector and Fe4 on a horse with Paragon, right? It's like super good. Uh, mm -hmm. People love the Brave Axe. It two shots a lot of enemies with a guy that has like massive bulk and promotes quickly. 
I just, mm -hmm. Lex is just a very easy unit for most casual players. I feel like an efficient oh, yeah. context. I don't know exactly how many turns the hero axe costs, but it's probably something. And if Lex, Lex like doesn't double digit, uh... yeah, yikes. <laughs> okay, I, that was I was hoping it'd be lower, but either way, like either you eat the turn cost of the hero axe, which means Lex is costing you turns, uh, or you don't, and then you have a unit with uh, no doubling capabilities, uh, the heaviest weapon type. Uh, mm -hmm. like, like if you don't have the hero axe, you also have to like, do like no, the eighteen weight weapons, which is I just find super funny. And then it's just mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like it's just a chip bot. He's not. I'm probably, I'm sure he's probably still better than like some of the other characters in B tier right here, but I find it hard to make a convincing argument for why he'd be any better than this. That I don't, I, don't, I couldn't raise him up from here if I tried without the hero axe. And with the hero axe, you know, it costs turns to get, and then it's, it's still mm -hmm. kind of good, but not so good that it warrants costing so many turns. So that's that's where I'm at on Lex. What do you think? So I'm not entirely on board with the idea that the hero axe really changes Lex as a unit. Mm -hmm. Um. Because... That's right, I forgot that hot take of yours. <laughs> I forgot about yeah, that yeah. one. So, so the idea is, right, because Lex is a Kanto unit, we're probably going to talk more about Kanto being useful with these next few units, because with Sigurd, we don't care because he's Sigurd. But <laughs> he doesn't need to use it in this exploitive way. But what you can do with Kanto is you put a unit in range of like a bunch of enemies, and then the enemies will go and attack them on enemy phase. Uh, and although they don't kill... You don't really get the unit boxed in because then player phase, they finish off the unit, assuming they 2 a KO, and then they just can't go forward like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times doubling isn't very important, especially for these lower quality units. Um, but like it would allow Lex to kill the enemies, but I don't think that really changes what he's doing. <clears throat> it is definitely a reliability boost, I would say that. Um, so in your hypothetical scenario, Lex... There's like two two universes, right? Two two versions of the multiverse. One of them is Lex kills the enemies, and one of them is he leaves them all at like half HP, and then he's yeah, like and... semi surrounded by a bunch of half HP enemies. How is the former yeah. not very different from the latter? Well, the enemies probably don't matter at that point, uh, because at that point you have like your weaker units just clean them up if you don't care about them. Because generally, FE4 is about getting from point A to point B, and so long as you're not getting slowed down, it's not a problem. Um. And again, also if he misses the hero axe, it's one turn if you really wanted to clean up those enemies. <laughs> so <clears throat> I don't I don't think it's huge. Okay. I don't think it's like I th I do think it makes him better, but not that it would change his tier. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So like what you're saying is if the hero axe didn't cost turns, you still wouldn't move around legs. Uh yeah. Well, I do think he's a pretty okay unit on his own merits. Um mm -hmm. he is one of the calves that you get early on, and he's got fairly good combat. Um, because he hits very hard, and that's usually all you need in a uh, filler unit. Uh, what I do find as a problem with Lex is, even if you were to get him the Hero Axe, he tends to become a bit worse near the end of the game. Yeah, 4 and 5 are cast. pretty bad for him, I find. Yeah, um, and also just Chapter 3, even if, like, you gave him the Pursuit Ring, he couldn't really fight the Cross Knights well, because not only would uh, he not probably double with the Hand Axe unless he was Speed Blessed, they also like to attack it with swords because uh, they get advantage on that. <clears throat> so he doesn't hit them. Um, that's one of the biggest problems Lex has is if fighting sword users aren't very good on him. Because yeah. Axes that's... have the worst matchup against swords. Generally speaking, swords do pretty well even against lances. And lances will do well even against axes. But axes do not do well against swords at yeah. all. Especially in your... Yeah. Not only do swords, you know, get the 20 um, evasion boost, but swords are already 30 points more in evasion than axes because yeah. it's three white versus 18. Yeah. So that is pretty massive. At least like if, if he's in arena, Lex against like a, a sword unit, he'll usually win if he has the hero axe because he has so many shots to hit them mm -hmm. before they kill him. So I guess that's like one point where it maybe makes a difference. But yeah, it's, it's really annoying and tedious. And he does have to deal yeah. with it. Yeah, another nice thing about Lex is he usually promotes without any problems. Yeah. Um, you can get him promoted by Chapter 3 without any special feeding or anything like that. Um, the arena is, is really bad for him because in addition to all the other problems that he's going to face against the sword unit, arenas just give 20 avoid as well. So he, he's just whiffing all the time. It's really sad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the funny thing with Lex for me is like getting through the arena is like doable if you just like wait long enough. 
but then he never needs the Paragon Band. He doesn't really have anything else he can buy that's super useful for him, so he just ends up with like a bunch of money he can't do anything with. He needs to like fall in love with someone to make use of it. So uh -huh. he sits there with like 50k. <laughs> it's nothing I can spend <laughs> it on. It's like repair the Hero Axe, well, you know, 49k. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Hero Axe is noteworthy because it is, um, stat-wise, I believe it's objectively better than the Brave Lance. I think it's, like, one more might than it, same hit and weight. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's, like, it's good on him, but it's not game-changing. No. He still has just a bunch of other problems. Yeah, <clears throat> I agree. Okay, so, uh, I don't know exactly I... if, he, if he'll stay exactly where he is or not. We have these other units to talk about. We can always move him around a little bit if you think so. Yeah, um, he, I don't think he's going to go any, like, super far down. I... I do like the calves more than him, though. Okay, that's fair. Um, uh, do you think the calves are different enough to talk about them separately, or do you want to combine them a little bit? They mostly do the same thing. Um, you mostly want to have them do the same thing. Alex a bit worse than Nisha, but otherwise, they're the same unit, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say um, no way she says Nisha. It doesn't matter. I don't care about pronunciations. Don't worry about it. Well, I mean... If you, that's what they called him. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so like, like in the old translation, they called him Noish. Yeah. Uh, because it was like N O I S H. But yeah. now they have Nisha, which is the Irish spelling. Okay. Um, and it's N A O S or I S E or whatever. Works <laughs> for like, me. Yeah, you, you don't pronounce that Noish. <laughs> okay. Good. Heroes is weird with naming. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Though, uh, if you actually look at the Japanese, it, uh -huh. Nisha is closer. Mm -hmm. Just saying. So, do you think do you think Red Guy is better than Alec because uh, he's easier to make like super good uh, through like resources and his resources are less demand demanding? Because that's what that's what my notes say. That's what I thought. Uh, so Alec is beholden to the RNG, whereas uh, Nisha isn't. Um, well, I mean Nisha's still kind of beholden to RNG, but Alec oh, needs yeah. strength proc skills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Alec needs strength procs. Um, to be able to work late long term um also he wants a magic proc nisha also wants a magic proc he doesn't have good bulk and he doesn't have good strength and this becomes a problem when you're trying to get kills especially in the arena where he doesn't have any skills that he could cheese an arena fight with so he just has to have good enough stats to get through it and he usually doesn't <laughs> yeah now what i do always advise that you do with these units if you want to use one of them also, I usually don't advise a new player use one of them because they're difficult. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, what you do is you have one of them weaken an enemy, and then you have the other one kill that enemy. Yeah. And you do this for like all of the first couple maps. Uh, generally, you're also doing this in a productive manner, like killing an enemy in front of Sigurd or something. But you always want to make sure you're feeding one of them while the other one's the lackey. And if you are very good about this, you can usually get one of them promoted by chapter three. And if you do that, they're usually a better unit than, uh, like, if you had to use uh, Do or Yomke or something <laughs> at taking out the Cross Knights. <clears throat> uh, Alec, I know, I, I did some math just to uh, check how well they did against it. Alec has, like, a 1% chance of death, whereas Nisha's in, like, 0.4% chance of death. <laughs> So Nisha is usually better because he has higher strength, he has higher HP, and he has higher defense. And those are really what you care more about um, because the speed doesn't matter and you can always give Nisha the Pursuit Ring. Yeah, and then do you use the Light Brand to, in conjunction with like Magic Ring and... Uh, yeah, yeah, magic, it's Light magic Brand, bonus. Magic Ring. Yeah. From Paladin is like plus five magic on promotion, I think? Yes, yes. So that's enough to kill the Cross Knights. Um, the plus one magic proc they want by chapter five, you can usually get them to level 30 if you are... Uh, good about it by that point. They need one magic proc to be able to one round Andre's Knights, but <clears throat> it's not the most reliable to get, but it's still like a pretty good shot at getting one. So, yeah, it's like a 5% yeah. over 29 ish levels, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's okay. A 20, 27 ish, yeah. Yeah, they're not level one. That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, I think. One thing I, about. You go ahead. There you go. <laughs> I was gonna say I made like I think Pitfalls episode three was entirely dedicated to these two and Midir, and I mentioned the magic sword there, but I noticed later that the magic proc is actually pretty really instrumental for uh, one rounds everywhere. Like Alec, I was doing some math, he was like missing one rounds all over the place with like without the one magic proc after promotion. Yeah. So the best thing you can also do with these guys, uh, the game starts them off with swords. Alec is especially bad because he starts off with an iron sword. Yeah. Uh, give them lances. That will boost their damage by so much. Yeah, but they can only use iron before promotion, right? Lance wise. Yeah, they only use iron, but it's still like 
you should never put a sword on these guys until you get the brave sword. Um, <laughs> they they are just always going to be better damage with lances. You can argue maybe have a sword on them in the axe world if you want them to dodge, but if you need damage out of them and you feel they're like lacking on the damage front, give them lances. Mm -hmm. They that will that helps them a ton in the training process. Yeah, especially in chapter <clears throat> two where there's no reason to use swords whatsoever. It's like if you just bring like the swords that they get in prologue there. They really do uh -huh. fall off really hard. It's really like <laughs> you put their combat up against like a Lance Knight from like Elliot squad and you're like, Damn, yeah, these guys suck. <laughs> Where's my thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like this is the problem that a lot of new players fall into is they don't trade units items around. Yeah. And Alec and Nisha just... <laughs> 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 Yeah, Alec and Nisha are just really bad if you do that. You have to optimize their weapons for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's also where Dew comes in. Uh, again, Dew makes bad units good. Yeah. they And after promotion, they get B lances, right? So they can use the Brave Lance. Oh, yeah. They got Brave Lance after promotion. Uh, that was one of the mistakes, if I remember correctly, I made in my uh, LTC. Is I was planning to have Nisha or Alec use the Brave Lance in Chapter 5. When I should have just let Finn keep it. Mm. Uh, which led to some reliability problems. But, I mean, they can use it. They're good with it. Mm. It's not needed. It's not super useful. But improves the combat, so why not? Mm hmm Okay. Anything else on these guys? Um I yeah. I do think they're better than Lex. Again. Oh. Oh, um that's true. I can and see the that. uh yeah, the main reason is uh their late game's just a lot better. Lex doesn't have like one to two range where they do. Um Lex has accuracy issues, they don't really have accuracy issues. They're building kills and weapons that matter, Lex isn't. So I also feel like they're arguably better in the early chapters anyway, because they never get hit. Yeah, Lex can kind of die if you're not careful. I've yeah, seen people. It's like with Quan, it's like he has more bulk than most people, but I do feel like if I'm exposing one of these to like four enemies, it depends on like how many they face, I guess. But if I'm exposing them mm -hmm. to four enemies, I think Lex is almost almost gonna die, whereas these will probably survive. Probably. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be pretty good there. Yeah, I can see this either way, <laughs> but I'm pretty happy to put him above Lex. I think that's fine, and it'll, it'll piss off people, which is also funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lex is better in chapter two. But otherwise, yeah, I think they're better in every other map. I agree. So at this point, we've been analyzing units for about an hour and we're only halfway through. So you guys are going to get another FE4 Gen 1 video later. Stay on the lookout for it if you want to see an efficient player defend Arden of all people. And don't forget to subscribe to Velk as well and check out their ranked playthrough. Peace.